good morning to all so let us see different methods of uh, electric heating so electric heating can be uh, initially categorized into two types okay so there are there are two methods we can say in general one is power frequency heating method another one is high frequency heating method so power frequency heating method means uh, the the met the heating method in which uh, the elements or the objects or the substances are heated at normal supply frequency okay and the high frequency heating method means the the elements or the substance which are to be heated okay they are heated with high frequency supply okay so at normal frequency supply voltage the elements which are heated okay the heating methods under normal frequency uh, are further categorized into uh, resistance heating arc heating and electron bombardment heating okay so resistance heating can be categorized into direct resistance heating and indirect arc heating and indirect arc heating next uh, this um, the heating method at high frequency supply voltage okay the two there are two heating methods one is induction heating and another one is dielectric heating so induction heating can be further categorized into direct induction heating and indirect induction heating okay so these are all the different uh, heating methods okay so almost we are going to discuss almost all the heating let's so briefly uh, you can get an overview of these heating methods by looking at this image okay these are all the different heating process you can see uh, the different heating methods here if by looking at these images you can get different views okay if you see the arc heating method okay arc is struck here in between the electrode and the uh, metal which is to be heated okay and so the uh, the current is uh, passed through this part of the uh, object which is to be heated which is placed in the coils okay so this is the uh, dielectric material or the product which is to be heated which is placed in between two electrodes here okay so this is the charge which is to be heated uh, which is placed within a, a tank or furnace we can say and in which two electrodes are placed that is uh, direct resistance heating in electron bombardment heating okay this is the workpiece which is to be heated okay a beam is allowed to um, fall on this workpiece by an electron gun in order to heat that workpiece okay so we are going to discuss in detail about each and every heating process okay let us start with resistance heating okay so in this uh, heating method when normal frequency current passes through a uh, resistance okay what will happen is power loss will occur so you already know due to the resistance property of an element energy is dissipated in the form of heat okay so this uh, loss of energy is in the form of heat the power loss is in the form of heat okay so the electrical energy here is converted into heat energy and you already know the formula heat energy is heat dissipated can be uh, determined by the formula i square r t and power loss in general electrical power loss is uh, calculated by i square r or vi or v v square by r okay so you know what is meant by r is the resistance of the element v is the voltage and i is the current okay so there are different uh, of course there are only two methods of uh, resistance heating okay they can further be categorized but initially there are two methods of uh, resistance heating so direct resistance heating and indirect resistance heating okay so whenever the normal supply frequency current is allowed to pass through the uh, substance which is to be heated okay then that is known as direct resistance heating means the current will directly flow into the workpiece to be heated okay and the method is indirect resistance heating in the case of indirect resistance heating current is not allowed to pass through the workpiece okay so initially current uh, flows into a special resistance uh, element which is placed inside a furnace okay so when that furnace gets heated up that heat is transferred to the workpiece by either by radiation or by convection 
okay so whenever we are heating any workpiece um, by radiation or convection okay then that is known as indirect resistance heating okay so let us uh, discuss in detail about this direct resistance heating and indirect resistance heating let us start with direct resistance heating now in this uh, method of direct resistance heating okay electrodes if you see here uh, we have a furnace here this is the furnace this rectangular uh, shape this is the furnace in this furnace charges are placed okay and in this electrodes are immersed these two electrodes are here okay it can be three electrodes depending on the supply that you are going to give here I, 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 either i am giving a dc supply or a single phase ac supply that's why i am using two electrodes if i am giving three phase supply i will give i will place three electrodes in this furnace okay so in this method electrodes these two electrodes um, you can see here in this image are immersed in a material or the charge that is to be heated here charge is the substance which is to be heated okay we are giving the name charge okay so it is a substance which is to be heated this pink uh, um, colored uh, circles what you can see here the, this is the substance which is to be heated okay this uh, charge may be in the form of a powder or a piece pieces of um, metal or it can be a liquid okay so we can heat either a powder or a liquid or some metal pieces okay so we are in the, we are giving a common name what are maybe the substance that is to be heated we are giving a common name to that that is charge okay now to this electrodes i am giving either ac supply or dc supply since i have placed two electrodes here in this image that shows that um it is either a uh, dc supply or single phase ac supply okay so when metal pieces are to be heated means when this charge is to be heated a high resistive powder is sprinkled over the surface of this charge you can see this blue uh, dots here blue dots above this pink um, substance so that is a high resistive powder is sprinkled over the surface of the charge or the pieces metal pieces whatever it is or the liquid or the powder to avoid direct short circuit between the electrodes okay the purpose of sprinkling high resistance powder above this charge is to avoid okay is to avoid short circuit between these two electrodes okay so when current flows through the uh, charge okay when supply is given to the electrodes and when current flows through the charge and heat is produced in the charge itself okay this method will give high efficiency because directly current is able to flow into the um, a substance which is to be heated okay and as the current in this case is not variable we are giving a constant uh, supply hence automatic temperature control is not possible in this method so it is the drawback of it it will have high efficiency why because uh, why because directly uh, the electrode the current is able to flow directly into the charge which is to be heated okay drawback is that uh, since uh, current is not variable here the temper automatic temperature can control cannot be employed okay so there are two applications for this method one is salt uh, means this uh, resistance direct uh, direct resistance heating can be used in salt bath furnace other one is electrode boiler for heating water okay so this method can be employed in salt bath furnace and electrode boiler for heating water let us see what is this uh, salt bath furnace and electrode boilers okay salt bath furnace and electrode boiler for heating water so let us see what is this salt bath furnace so if you can see an image here the slide oh yeah this is an image this is a salt bath furnace okay so this uh, type of furnace will be consisting of a bath okay and containing some salt okay Uh, such as molten sodium chloride and two electrodes immersed in it okay so in uh, it is it is a tank or furnace in which okay 
it is a tank of furnace in which uh, molten sodium chloride is there and two electrodes will be immersed in it okay so um, molten sodium chloride is the uh, salt here okay this salt will have a fusing point of around 1000 to 1500 degrees celsius depending upon the type of salt that i am using here okay so when current is passed between the electrodes immersed in this salt okay so we are immersing two electrodes within this uh, salt so when current is passed between the electrodes immersed in the salt heat is developed and the temperature of the salt bath may be increased okay so when current passes what will happen the temperature of the salt will increase okay so such sort of arrangement is known as salt bath furnace okay so in this uh, sodium chloride molten sodium chloride in which electrodes are immersed the material that is to be heated is placed okay it is just dipped into it, inside it that's all okay simply it is dipped inside it okay the material that is to be heated the electrode should be carefully immersed in this uh, salt bath in such a way that the current flows through the salt not through the job being heated okay so the element which is to be heated it is simply immersed in into the sodium chloride molten sodium chloride and we must make sure that the current should flow only through the sodium chloride not not through the um, material or the metallic piece or the job which is to be heated okay so they are uh, the the material which is to be heated is placed in such a way that the current from the electrode will not flow into that material directly okay so um, if we use the dc supply it will cause electrolysis so low voltage ac up to 20 volts and current up to 3000 amperes is adopted depending upon the type of the furnace that we are using okay so there is a drawback if we use a dc uh, supply that is it will cause electrolysis so usually for uh, salt bath furnaces low voltage ac supply of up to 20 volts and current up to 3000 amperes is used okay so resistance of the salt decreases with, with increase in the temperature of the salt okay the resistance of the salt will be decreasing with the increase in the temperature of the salt therefore in order to maintain the constant power input the voltage can be controlled by providing tap changing transformer so to this a tap changing transformer can be connected in order to maintain the constant power input okay the control of the power input is uh, will also affect uh, is also affected by varying the depth of the immersion of the electrodes and the distance between the electrodes okay so the control of the power input can also be affected by varying the depth of the immersion of the electrodes and distance between the electrodes okay so simply in this case of salt bath furnace what is done is a molten sodium chloride is placed supply is given so that the temperature of chloride will increase two electrodes are placed in this okay they are placed in such a way that the um, the work piece which is dipped inside is um, sodium chloride uh, will not be will not be in direct contact with this uh, electrodes so the heat, when the because the, when supply is given to this electrodes molten uh, sodium chloride will get heated up it is for the for this uh, salt bath furnace okay so next one is electrode boiler okay next one is electrode boiler so this is it okay so you yeah, this electrode boiler is usually used to boil water by immersing three electrodes in the tank you can see three electrodes here i have one more image okay by immersing three electrodes in the tank okay so you can see this is a furnace inside the furnace a refractory lining is provided which can, which will help the furnace to withstand the high temperatures inside the furnace okay so refractory lining is usually provided to help furnace to withstand the high temperatures okay so this uh, uh, electrode boiler uh, works on uh, based on the principle that when electric current passes through the water okay produces heat due to the resistance offered by it okay 
so for if i am giving this is supply it results into a lot of evolution of h2 at negative electrode and o2 at positive electrode okay if this is supply is given okay then uh, it will result into a lot of evolution of h2 at negative electrode or so if i am giving this is supply I, i should use only two electrodes i have told you that we are going to use three electrodes here okay so actually if I, if i am giving this is supply i will use only two electrodes and it is observed that whenever dc supply is given to these two electrodes it will result into a lot of evolution of hydrogen at a negative electrode and oxygen and positive electrode okay so if ac supply is given okay so i am giving three uh, i'm give i'm mean means i'm using uh, what is it three electrodes mean that means i am giving three phase supply so this will hardly result in any evolution of gas but fits the water okay so it is observed that when three phase supply is given uh, it uh, hardly results in any evolution of gas it simply heats the water and electrode boiler tank is earthed solidly connected to the ground okay it is uh, it is uh, earthed okay okay and uh, to this um, uh, furnace okay to this furnace a circuit breaker is usually uh, incorporated to make and break all the poles simultaneously and an overcurrent protective device is also provided okay overcurrent protective device means relay okay a relay is also provided in each conductor feeding an electrode okay so to this uh, electrode boiler means the sub to the supply elements okay uh, we with a uh, circuit breaker as well as an overcurrent protective device will be there so this is about direct resistance heating okay Uh, and we have seen two applications that is self flow boiler water boiler another one is salt bath furnace okay so let us discuss uh, indirect resistance heating i hope you are able to follow okay if you are listening carefully you will be able to follow okay next one is indirect resistance heating so in this method of indirect resistance heating electric current i have already told you electric current is passed through a wire or other high resistance material okay uh, forming an heating element okay so uh, high resistance material if you can see here in this image resistive heating element is here okay so which is placed inside a furnace okay you can see here i have written heating chamber okay this is the heating chamber in which a resistive heating element is placed to which supply is given okay uh, to which supply is given the heat produced will be proportional to i square r here i square r loss power loss produced in the heating element it is delivered to the charge by one or more modes of transfer of heat you know different modes of transfer of heat one uh, one is conduction another one is convection another one is radiation here in this case either by convection or radiation heat is transferred into the charge charge you know what is meant by charge it can be any material powder or liquid or a uh, metallic pieces some pieces okay so in general you are called, giving, giving a name that is charge okay so here in this case of indirect heating by convection and radiation heat is transferred from this uh, heating chamber to the charge okay and enclosure okay so of course you need an heating chamber here to transfer the heat from this heating element to the charge okay for industrial purposes where large amount of charge is to be heated okay for industrial purposes where large amount of charge is to be heated then the heating element is kept in cylindrical cylinder surrounded by a jacket containing the charge okay the arrangement will provide uniform temperature an automatic temperature can also be provided in the case of indirect heating okay so in the case of indirect heating automatic temperature control can be provided both ac as well as dc supply can be given uh, in the case of uh, in the, for indirect heating purpose okay so this is about the indirect heating okay so simply in this what is done is in the furnace okay a charge is placed and uh, with in, inside the heating uh, chamber high resistive element is placed and uh, dc or ac supply is given 
so when power loss occurs in this resistive element that power loss it will be in the form of heat that heat is transferred due to convection and radiation into the charge to heat this charge okay so now this is about direct heating and indirect heating let us see the temperature control of resistance furnace or oven okay how to control the temperature of the resistance furnaces okay so so we know temperature control is very very necessary okay this temperature depending on the requirement we can maintain a constant temperature or we can vary the temperature okay and we can control the temperature either manually or automatically okay and uh, the heat that is developed will be uh, in you can calculate the heat developed within the furnace by using the formula i square rp or v square t by r okay so there are different ways to control the temperature uh, within the uh, furnace okay so let us discuss one by one first way is by varying the applied voltage to the element or current flowing through the element okay so the, you know the element or the to the electrodes supply is given you already know that okay so either by varying the applied voltage or current flowing through the uh, electrodes you can uh, control the temperature okay so when voltage across the oven is uh, oven means furnace Uh, is uh, controlled by changing the transformer tapping okay so you know in order to vary the voltage you can connect a transformer in between the supply and the electrodes and uh, if the transformer is having tappings simply by varying the tappings of the transformer you can vary the voltage okay and this method is economical if you are varying the voltage by varying the transformer tappings it is economical it is more suitable if the transformer is used for stepping down the voltage for the supply to the a furnace okay but uh, this sort of uh, condition usually it will not arise okay so rarely it arises okay means rarely it, uh, there will be any need to vary the voltage okay so auto transformers or induction regulators can also be used to vary the voltage supply voltage okay so this voltage across the uh, furnace can be controlled by varying the impedance connected in series with the circuit you can you know to vary the voltage you can connect an uh, impedance in series to the um, circuit or to the electrodes uh, but uh, this method of connecting impedance in series to the uh, circuit is not economical as power is continuously wasted in in the controlling resistance okay uh, so Uh, this method of using uh, impedance is limited to small furnaces okay so what you can do is in order to control the in order to vary the voltage either you can provide tapping to the uh, transformer or you can connect a tap changing transformer okay or tap a transformer okay transformer with tappings can be connected to the in between the furnace and the uh, supply or you can connect an uh, induction regulator or auto transformer to vary the voltage or you can connect an impedance uh, to this circuit so when you connect impedance uh, because of that lot of energy is wasted so you show if you if it is a small uh, furnace okay then in uh, which utilizes very small amount of uh, which requires very low voltage for such cases you can connect an impedance so this is how you can you can control the Uh, or you can vary the applied voltage to control the temperature okay next method is by varying the resistance of the element okay so temperature can be controlled by switching various combinations of groups of resistances used in the furnace okay so you can uh, you have seen in in the case of indirect uh, indirect uh, resistance uh, heating method you have seen resistive element is there or you can you can connect either p parallel resistances or series resistances okay so series parallel combinations for varying the temperature okay so that is one method another method is by the use of variable number of elements okay so in this method number of heating elements in the working is changed so that total power input or heat developed is changed okay the heating elements okay the actually you have seen uh, we are using only two electrodes in our um, means whatever images that i have shown there were 
either two electrodes or three electrodes were there so depending on if you want to vary the uh, temperature then you just vary the heating elements okay uh, number of heating elements so that temperature can be varied okay so power input will vary and heat developed will also vary by varying the number of heating element okay but this method will not provide uh, uniform heating unless number of heating elements in the circuit at any particular instant is distributed over the surface area which requires complicated wiring okay so if i am varying the number of heating elements then the temperature will not be uniform of course it will vary but it will not remain uniform in order to make it uniform okay so it requires a complex wiring okay next way of controlling the temperature is by providing uh, by changing the connections okay so in this method the elements are arranged to be connected either all in series or all in parallel or combination of series parallel or they can be connected in star or delta by means of switching a different instant according to the requirement okay so this is the simplest and the most commonly used method for temperature control so most commonly used method for temperature control is change of connections method in this method the elements that are used to heat the charge okay they are either connected resistive elements actually here okay they are either connected in series or they are connected in parallel or they can be connected in star or delta this is the most commonly used method for heating other method is by varying the ratio of on and off times of supply okay an on and off switch can be employed for temperature control but it use its use is restricted to small ovens okay so you can use an on and off switch for temperature control but usually it is used for only small ovens or small furnaces okay so the time duration for which the furnace is connected to the supply and the time duration for which it is it remains cut off from the supply will determine the temperature okay so when i am using on and off switch for controlling the temperature so i must note down the time duration for which the furnace is turned on means supply is given to the furnace and uh, i must also note down the time duration for which the furnace is turned off means supply is not given to the furnace okay so such furnaces are supplied with a thermostat switch which makes and breaks the supply connection at particular temperatures okay so thermostat will be continuously monitoring the temperature of this uh, furnace and it will either connect the supply or disconnect the supply at particular temperature the ratio of time duration during which supply remains on to the total time duration of an off a cycle on off cycle is an indication of the temperature okay so that uh, this thermostat will monitor okay higher the ratio the larger will be the temperature of this furnace okay so what is that ratio it is the ratio is the time duration during which supply is turned on divided by total time duration of on and off cycle okay time duration during the supply is on by total on and off cycle okay on time by on off time okay on plus off time on time divided by on plus off time of this furnace okay so this ratio if it is higher larger will be the temperature of the furnace advantage of this method is to it is more efficient than series impedance method okay so these are all the different methods of uh, um controlling the temperature okay so let us see essential requirements for good uh, resistance heating element okay so essential requirements for good resistance heating element is first one is high specific resistance okay so it should have the heating element should have high specific resistance for uh in order to have a uh, means it it will, if it has high specific resistance it will be able to provide enough heating required by the 
uh, substance which is to be heated. Okay, so material should have high specific resistance so that the length of the wire may be required to provide given amount of heat. Small length. Okay, so whenever specific resistance is high, okay, you can reduce the length of the wire which is required to give the required heat. Okay, so in order to get the required heat, okay, so means for in order to have good, uh, in order to provide good heating. to the element or the substance which is to be heated okay specific resistance of the heating element should be high so if the specific resistance is high we can reduce the length of the heating element okay so usually example of uh, high specific resistance element is nichrome nichrome means it is a non magnetic alloy nichrome is a non magnetic alloy it consists of 80% of nickel and 20% of chromium okay nichrome is 80% of nichrome is an alloy okay non magnetic alloy which consists of 80% of nickel and 20% of chromium which has very high specific resistance since it has high specific resistance the length of the uh, heating element can be reduced next one is um, next requirement is the heating element should have high melting point okay so it should have high melting point so that it can withstand high temperatures that's all it is well known to you i need not explain this okay so in order to withstand high temperature uh, it should have high melting point okay a small increase in this temperature will not destroy the element okay even if small increase in temperature is there it will not destroy the element so example for the element which has high uh, melting point the heating element that you can use is you can use tungsten as the heating element here okay you can use tungsten as the heating element to um which has a high melting point okay so the melting point it will be it can withstand up to a temperature of 3414 degrees celsius tungsten okay next uh, essential requirement for resistance heating element is low temperature temperature coefficient of the of resistance okay so for for accurate temperature control variation of the resistance with the operating temperature should be low okay in order to have accurate temperature control the variation of the resistance with the operating temperature should be low this can be obtained only if the material has low temperature coefficient of resistance okay so this is another requirement okay so example for low temperature coefficient of resistance material is semiconductor materials okay semiconductor materials will have low temperature coefficient of resistance okay semiconductor materials such as carbon silicon or germanium okay they will typically have negative temperature coefficient of resistance okay next uh, essential requirement of good resistance heating is free it should be free from oxidation okay so the element material should not oxidize when it is subjected to high temperatures otherwise the formation of the oxidized layer will shorten its life okay due to oxidation life of the uh, heating element will reduce therefore it should be free from oxidation example for uh, uh, the element which is free from oxidation is the non magnetic alloy which i have already told you that is nichrome means it is the combination that alloy is the combination of nickel and chromium 80% nickel and 20% chromium so another requirement for good resistance heating element is it should be it should have high mechanical strength okay uh, if it has high mechanical strength then it can withstand the mechanical vibrations that occur when the machine uh, when the furnace is in under operating condition okay so it it will withstand high mechanical vibrations okay so if it is able to withstand high mechanical uh, mechanical vibration that means it has high mechanical strength so the element example for that element is element which has high mechanical strength is nichrome again so nichrome has uh, high mechanical strength okay so again and again i need not tell you nichrome is nickel and chromium okay so another re essential requirement for good resistance heating is it should be non corrosive okay 
so this uh, the element which is used for as heating element should not corrode when exposed to atmosphere or any other chemical fumes okay so whenever a heating element uh, is boiled uh, or heated up within the okay whenever it is heated up within the furnace if it uh, produces any chemical fumes okay the um, heating element should not corrode okay so the example for that is again nichrome okay so 80 to 20 80 by 20 80 means 80% nickel and uh, 20% chromium okay and it should be economical economical means its cost should not be too high okay so nickel based materials and iron based materials does not have uh, they they won't cost much so we can use nickel based or iron based materials so these are all the essential requirements um, uh for a good resistance heating okay so let us see the failures of heating elements what are all the uh, causes which causes failure of the heating element so one of the uh, first cause which causes failure of the heating element is the formation of hot spot okay so i hope you know what is meant by hot spot in your houses if you have aluminum vessel as well as steel vessel okay so if you place a steel vessel on the stove okay so uh, if it is suppose if it is empty okay if you place an uh, steel vessel on the stove on the flame uh, of the stove and um, if it is empty then you can see that in some uh, portions it is burned in some areas it is burned specific areas instead of steel vessel if you place an aluminum vessel on the stove okay the aluminum can distribute heat uniformly okay aluminum has a property of distributing heat uniformly therefore if an empty aluminum vessel is placed okay you can't see any burn burning uh, places burning spots on the aluminum you can see that uh, heat has been uniformly distributed uh, throughout the vessel okay so but according to uh, it's a general knowledge i'm telling you uh, in the year of 2008 uh, usa declared that aluminum is not uh, good for health okay we should not use aluminum vessel in us they have banned all the aluminum vessels so uh, but uh, uh, steel is you can use steel or hard anodized aluminum okay for uh, cooking okay so I'm, in order to explain about hot spot i'm telling on this okay So it's just a general knowledge um, thing that I'm telling you. So better to use uh, aluminium reinforced food grade steel vessels. Okay. So if you want to use a healthy, if you want to keep your health in a good way, okay, you must use aluminium reinforced uh, steel vessels. Why? Because the aluminium will uniformly distribute the heat, where steel can't uniformly distribute the heat. okay so steel vessels in the steel vessels hot spots will appear if you observe here i am showing you some image okay you just observe the leftmost image so you can see some yellow uh, color here yellow reddish color okay those are the hot spots okay this violet uh, region what you can see is the means it, this vessel is being heated up but in, in violet region heat can heat has no heat it is not heated up okay means in some portion heat is there okay in other portions it is not there okay if you can see in the second image here okay in the middle it is not heated up but in the surrounding heat it is heated up okay so and if you see this third one okay it is uh, it is yellowish in color throughout the surface means heat is distributed uniformly so heat must be distributed uniformly whenever a vessel is heated okay whether it is electrical heating or non electric heating whatever it is okay the material should be uniformly heated okay so let us get into the subject okay so formation of hot spot i hope you have understood okay if uneven heat distribution on the surface when a surface is heated that is hot now okay so due to uneven heat distribution hot spot you can see hot spots here okay so these hot spots can be seen when infrared rays are allowed to fall on this surface okay otherwise you can't see with your naked eye 
okay so now let us see uh, about let us discuss about this hot spot so the elements um okay so the elements may break where it shines brighter during its operation whenever means as the temperature of the element is increased gradually it starts to uh, it shows a shiner brighter image okay when infrared rays falls on it okay so the, that means that temperature at that particular spot is hotter when compared to the rest of it okay this is known as formation of hot spot i have already explained okay so this is the image of an a furnace here this is the image of a furnace you can see here you can see a violet color uh, throughout the surface in some in this particular space you can see a yellowish red spot here also you can see a yellowish red spot this is the uh, image of a furnace okay this is the image of a furnace so when the furnace is heated up at some particular places it is um, more heated uh, when compared to the other uh, other uh, surface of the furnace okay so if such uh, heating occurs then it is it causes failure of the heating element okay so heat distribution should be uniform throughout the furnace okay so uh, this uh, hot spots may occur uh due to some reasons one is due to unequal spacing okay due to unequal spacing what is this unequal spacing let us discuss if the spacing between the heating element is non uniform then the temperature will be maximum where the spacing is minimum and thus hot spot may be formed okay so the heating elements which are placed in the surface uh, within the furnace okay the heating elements which are placed within the furnace the heat distribution between those heating elements should be uniform okay otherwise hot spots may appear okay so due to unequal spacing between the heating elements other reason is bias uh, due to the supporting structures if the supporting structure is a bad conductor of heat then it will not transfer any heat okay the supporting sub structure of the heating elements if it is bad conductor of heat then it will not transfer heat uniformly if it is a bad conductor means definitely it will not transfer any heat hence temperature of the heating element will be higher near the supports resulting in formation of hot spots okay so next one is oxidation you know what is meant by oxidation the outer surface of the heating element which is open to the atmosphere gets oxidized due to higher temperature okay outer surface of the heating element which is open to the atmosphere gets oxidized due to higher temperatures during switching operation the oxide layer gets flickered flickered off and due to this the inner surface is now open to the atmosphere okay so if okay so the, you already know i need not explain much about the oxidation next is embrittlement due to gain uh, growth okay so let us see what is it all heating alloys containing iron tends to form uh, form a large brittle grain at high temperatures okay they become brittle when at high temperatures okay so when what happen when the temperature goes low when it when it cools what will happen is the when it cools the heating element are uh, will are very brittle and liable to rupture easily so slightly handle, uh, slightest uh, handling and jerks may occur okay so sorry i'm not telling you in a correct way okay so when means the element alloys sometimes when they are heated okay uh, for example iron okay iron materials when they are heated they become brittle okay and when they become cool uh, for, uh, due to slight uh, uh, slight, uh, slight handling or due to jerks okay what will happen they just uh, break okay slight rupturing may occur in them i hope you know what is meant by brittle okay i hope i don't know whether i was able to reach you but i hope you have you understand if you know the meaning of the brittle you will be able to understand okay so when the temperature rises the iron alloys will become brittle when it cools down the um, slight rupturing may occur due to jerks or when we are handling when we want to move it from one place to another place they may rupture next one is corrosion so chemical fumes produced during industrial operation corrode the surface of the heating element where the actual contact of the fumes with the heating element occurs okay due to this failure of the heating element may occur okay next is mechanical failure 
during the alloying a portion of the heating element may have higher content of higher resistivity material so this portion will produce more amount of heat for the same current okay thus the heating element may get damaged okay okay so the board while alloying okay during alloying a portion of the heating element may have higher content of higher resistivity material okay so the resistivity should be throughout the alloy it should be uniform if it is not uniform in which our portion high resistivity is there more heat it will produce more heat okay and uh, and the other portion more heat may not be there when current is amount to uh, when current is allowed to pass through it okay the heating element may get damaged okay so these are all the causes of uh, failure of the heating element 